there are mainly two types of musicians, classically oriented and non-classically oriented. Classically oriented musicians are the types that read music primarily to make a living. They work in large ensembles and with large groups, most of them working in large ensembles of many different types, read music for just about every gig that they work, and have a very large community within their own niche. Non-classically oriented musicians work in smaller crowds, have a larger network of people, and a larger genre set than said classically oriented musicians. But both types of musicians have to deal with things like gig cancellations or postponing. They have to exist under lots of microscopes at the same time. Each of them relies on the other type of their being to succeed. And they're the best at what they do because they have their paintbrush in every single color ready to put that color on the canvas at the same time. So I spent some time at Dan Sumner's studio in Uptown Monroe in the Garden District as sort of a studio stuntman laying down tracks on steel guitar, mandolin, and accordion. In a studio or recording setting, whoever is hosting you has to be very specific with you about what they want. In order to effectively do this, they have to communicate in both languages, classical and non-classical. Dan Sumner was very cut and dry about what he wanted and what he didn't want. No bebop. <laughs> Dan Sumner did a stellar job of communicating to me what he needed in any way, shape, or form that he could. The idea is, there are many different types of musicians cut from a lot of different cloths, and there are going to be language barriers, but the point is that there is no soul barrier. Everyone has a soul, and everyone has soul. I heard a flute-playing friend of mine who was mainly formally trained, referred to as one of the most emotional flute players I've ever worked with. And even that in and of itself goes to say a lot, that she put a lot of emotion or soul into the music that she was playing. One musician that was in a large ensemble, being under the direction of a conductor, might have known, because of that, to be watching their conductor for the next downbeat or for the next big cue. Later on in life, if they were to join a big band without a conductor in it, they would already know to look for somebody in the rhythm section or someone in the band to be giving a downbeat with their hands or with the neck of their guitar or with something. Someone that hadn't been classically trained might not know to do that on the first time. About my sophomore year of college, I was brought into one of the larger groups that I've ever worked with, primarily a swing band or a big band. I got a phone call from the leader of this group saying, I hope you're good at sight reading. And I thought to myself, I'm pretty decent at sight reading, I can handle this. I got to the rehearsal and there was the biggest, fattest binder full of music sitting on the stand in front of me that said alto sax. I was just barely able to scrape by in that rehearsal and for that show because of the training that I'd had formally in education. If I hadn't had formal training, I wouldn't have been able to make it through that. Some of the musicians of New Orleans were brought up so musically that there was music in their household before they could even speak. They were speaking the language of music before they could even talk which in and of itself says a lot about how they will live the rest of their life as a musician. They're going to use terms for things that other types of musicians have never heard and have no idea what they stand for. So what are we saying here? We're saying that there have been disagreements between formal and informal musicians about the way that they think about things. 
but it's really all just one way of thinking about the same one thing, music. A series of harmonic overtones connecting all living beings, even the stars. When it comes down to it, musicians are musicians, and music is pretty amazing. If you like what you see, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip-flop.